I'm Wendy LeBlanc Arbuckle, and I'm the Director of Education for the Pilates Center of Austin. And I'm here with Jaap Wunderwall, and we're at the Colorado School of Energy Studies, where I've just, I'm experiencing your perspective on embryology. And uh, I feel that embryology is a critical, it, it, it's such an important uh, understanding of who we are, mm -hmm. really getting back into a deep understanding of who we are and where we've come from and how we're formed and, and really how that informs how we move. Mm -hmm. I think it's deeply missing. And, uh, and you've spoken to that so much. Uh, I, I have uh, a question for you around that. But I first of all wanted to share something that I got out of being with you yesterday that um, talked to you, you were speaking about the important that moment when the um, at, at the moment when the the egg cell nests yeah. into the womb and how it's actually a backing into the mother mm -hmm. backing into that space and I have I've studied embryology on embryology on certain levels and I've and I have a deep appreciation but I got a whole new appreciation of what of nesting and, and more of a nesting in myself being in myself more and how deeply that informed how I moved this morning in my mo morning practice is totally new. So I just want to thank you for that. But also to really, uh, I think it's really important to hear you speak as a, an MD and embryologist and really a pioneering new thinking around embryology. I'd love to hear you speak of kind of touched on it a little bit, the importance of bridging mm -hmm. science with a deeper understanding mm -hmm. of who we are and how deeply that will change and alter our thinking about body as machine, bringing us back to our being yeah. with ourselves. Yeah. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. About bridging between science and science and embryology. Yeah. Your perspective on embryology. Yeah. Well, I I am a phenomenologist, and phenomenologist is also a scientific method, but it's a method that is based on um, participate in the reality that you live. Science. Scientists most of the time tend to be the observers. They observe the body. They are the onlookers. They do not participate in the object they study. And in science, our body has become an object object to be studied. But a phenomenologist goes the other way. He goes for his senses. You know, we live a reality, and one of the reality we live is our body. We do not only have a body, we are it. So phenomenology tries to follow the path, the way of participating in, for example, a body or in an embryo. Not observing it, analyzing it, looking for causes, but participate in embryo. When it moves, how does it move? It's very simple. You have to participate in the movements, the motions an embryo is making, and then you will, with your senses of motion, with your own sense perce perception possibility to perceive motion, you, made rec you might recognize what the movement, what kind of gesture, what kind of quality that movement is. Mm -hmm. So that's the bridging way. I mean, in natural science, you apparently separate. You have to separate from your object and of study. But in phenomenology, you have to participate, you have to connect. So I often say that phenomenology is the, is the approach of connection, of, of love, of making contact with, participate in the reality. 
and science threatens us to separate us from ourselves, from the world. Of course, science learns us a lot, lot about the reality, the world, our body, but not connect with it. Science makes of us onlookers, not participators in this world. So, yeah, bridging is, so to say, uh, the method of phenomenology bridges between me as an, as an observer, bridges between me and the observer, and the observed. It makes, you know, the bridging of participation. It heals. It's a healing way of looking at things. While actually natural science, you know, is more or less a disordered way to look at ourselves because it separates us from ourselves and our, you know, it makes the body an anatomical robot or an anatomical mechanism. And there is no moment in my life that I experience my body as something alien that is functioning and producing me. But that's our thoughts, ideas, uh, concepts that they want to, so to say, yeah, uh, yeah, push or whatever, or try to bring it in my, my body reality. And I never recognize that. I never. And that's, yeah, maybe that's the right word, that I want to make a bridge again between the reality that the anatomist in me and the anatomist in science have brought forward. That's the objective reality, the secondary reality of the observed reality. I want to bridge it with the reality that I live, yeah. that I feel, that I, uh, uh, that I um, perceive. And these two realities threaten to be separated and which is worse, worse, which is worse, is that science tends to promote their view on the body as the reality, and to consider the reality that I experience as a so-called subjective, which is, in scientific terms, not a real reality. And that's, yeah, that's what I try to do, to reconnect what has necessarily had to be separated. It is necessary that you separate from an object because otherwise you can never see it, study it, and become aware of it. But it now tends to be, you know, a kind of fatal, um, yeah, disruption between us and the reality, between me and my body. And I want to restore that and bridge it. Is that a little bit That's understandable? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It so speaks to the importance of having uh, our having our movement be practice. Yeah. Our movement practice be something that is actually connecting us with who we are. Mm -hmm. Very different than me doing something someone told me I should do only one way. Yeah. How do how do, how am I growing as yeah. a human being in my yeah. movement practice? Yeah. So yeah. then I get to create a space for clients to grow themselves. Yeah. yeah. So the first thing you have to do is. Trust what your senses are telling. That's the reality you live in. That's what in philosophy we call Lebenswelt, the, the world, the reality of senses. The, that's the first dimension, that's the first reality you wake up in. That's the reality that I move my arm, and not the reality that the parietal lobe somewhere in this skull is moving my arm. My brain is not moving my arm. I move my arm. And apparently I need for that a brain and a muscle and nerves, but it's me moving my arm. And uh, yeah. Yeah, and so much of what you were speaking to is there's a relationship with gravity. There's a relationship yeah. with space. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But by means of gravity I can perform my my motions. Yeah. Uh, Blechschmidt, a very famous uh, embryologist, human embryologist, said, no performance without resistance. Mm -hmm. How would you ever be able to move your body if there wasn't gravity to resist it? So gravity is a necessary condition you need in order to move your body and bring it in the levity of non-gravity, so yeah. to say. So. Motion cannot be caused by the body because the body is, uh, yeah, is, is gravity, is matter. But 
apparently you need the body to move, otherwise you could never become a being that is conscious of the fact that I'm, that is aware of the fact that now I am moving my arm. So there is also levity in me, and you can call that soul or spirit, but there is something else in me that needs that gravity in order to move. That you don't have to fight gravity. No, 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 no. You yeah. invite, you invite the matter in your body and the skeleton and the gravity, and you try to invite it to come in, you know, the direction that you want to go. And you need it. You need that gravity. Yeah. Otherwise, you cannot move. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for taking the time. Oh, well. So appreciate You're welcome. So appreciate And uh, you can see how deeply inspiring it is to be in this environment. And, and we're all so grateful to be here. Okay. And I really invite you to look at what is your movement practice? How is it feeding you? How is it enlivening you? How is it bringing you more into a relationship, a deeper relationship with yourself, with others, with the environment? So, so grateful. Thank you for being here. Good. You're welcome.